Romulus, the now destroyed world that once housed one of the Federation's most mysterious and feared enemies. But what do we really know about this once important star system? Well, today, we'll find out. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon, a Star Trek web series that dives into the history of any given topic, using Beta Canon sources and my own imagination to fill in the gaps. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the Romulan star system to better understand its place in Star Trek history. I just want to remind you all that though this video does contain mostly Alpha Canon information provided about the star system over the various Trek series, this is still a Beta Canon video. And because this is a Beta Canon video, all information relayed should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust, and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. 4th century Vulcan, Old Earth's calendar, was a powder keg of civil war. The entire planet was struggling for its own survival, and not many Vulcan historians of the day believe that Vulcan would survive to see the 5th century. Then, seemingly out of the blue, one man, a Vulcan named Surek, would begin to preach a philosophy of logic as a way of life. And this philosophy would grow at a tremendous rate, eventually becoming the basis for the entire Vulcan species to thrive upon. Not all were happy with Surek's ideas, though. And this minority, known as those who march beneath the raptor's wings, eventually departed Vulcan after losing a nuclear war called the Time of the Awakening. Much of Vulcan's early history has been lost to the ravages of time, and thus not much is known about these Vulcans and the types of starships they left in. Nevertheless, what is known is that these Vulcan ships would end up in a star system in the Z6 sector of the Beta Quadrant, settling on twin planets that would eventually become known as Romulus and Remus. The Romulan star system had four planets which revolve around a G-type main sequence star similar to Earth's own Sun. Its inner planet was a dead molten rock planetoid with a full orbit of its parent star every 272 human days. It had three moons and could reach temperatures of approximately 420 degrees Celsius on the day side and negative 175 degrees on its night side. The second planet from the Romulan sun was the Romulan homeworld itself, Romulus. This planet was a Class M world and also very similar to Earth in a lot of ways. Romulus was quite different from the world that its people had left behind. Vulcan is, in layman terms, a dry, desolate desert world. Romulus, on the other hand, was a lush planet, with an abundance of water, plants, and its own animal system. The exact reason that the Romulan people chose to colonize this planet, so different from their own, is unknown. But it's believed that several factors contributed to this decision, as extrapolated from passed down Romulan folklore. The first was the abundance of resources located on the planet. Romulus had everything that the new Romulan people needed, not only to survive, but to thrive. Precious metals for building a colony have always been a factor when choosing a colony world, and Romulus had these metals in spades. The second reason was that the third planet in the system was rich in dilithium crystals, an important component used in faster-than-light travel. It is most likely that the early Vulcan starships did contain some form of faster-than-light travel, though it is believed that this warp drive would have been very primitive, and quite probably not able to accelerate a starship much past Warp 1 itself. The third reason also revolved around the third planet in the star system, that being that it held a primitive form of life that would become known as the Riemann species. And the Romulans believed that they could easily conquer them and put them to work as a slave race for them. It should also be noted that Romulus itself also contained a primitive humanoid species, which although similar in look to the Vulcan people, 
had pronounced forehead ridges. But rather than conquer this species, the Romulans welcomed them into their own, most likely to effectively grow their own ranks. The final and more subjective reason was the time that the Romulans themselves had spent in space. The exact time they spent traveling from Vulcan to Romulus is unknown. Estimates place this anywhere from several decades to several centuries. And the drive to begin anew on an untamed world must have been a large one. And so, with all these combined factors, the second planet in the star system would become their home world. The third planet, sister planet to Romulus, would become known as Remus. It too would have an atmosphere similar to that of Earth's being classified as a Class M world. Remus, however, was tidally locked, meaning one side of the planet always faced the Romulan sun, while the other side always faced away from it. The Remus civilization developed on the night side of the planet due to the extreme temperatures on its day side. The fourth and final planet of the Romulan star system was a gas giant, similar in composition to that of Sol's planet Saturn. Rom 4 would have no rings circling it, but would also have 52 moons. These moons all being rich in various precious minerals. The main Romulan starship construction facility would eventually be built in amongst these moons. As the Romulan civilization began to take hold within the star system, they would indeed begin to look once again to the stars, but this time that look would be to conquer. First, Remus would fall to the technologically superior race, and the Romulans would use the Remus species as both cannon fodder in upcoming wars, as well as slave construction teams sent out to do any and all of the dangerous tasks that the Romulans felt were below them. After that, the Romulan species would head out of the Romulan star system and conquer space surrounding them, eventually creating what was known as the Romulan Star Empire. This type of conquer expansionism would not last long, however, as the Romulans would end up adopting a more secretive approach, preferring to infiltrate its enemies and destroy them from within most times leaving a species with no alternative but to request help from their Romulan allies to quell serious uprisings. And the Romulans would use these disputes to manipulate many species into becoming a part of their star empire. And although the Vulcan species had also thrived since the Romulans had left that home world, they had basically forgotten about their Romulan cousins. But Romulus never forgot Vulcan setting out the ultimate goal of revenge on the Vulcan people for what the Romulans viewed as a forced and disgraceful relocation. By the mid-22nd century, the Romulan Star Empire had built an impressive information-gathering network known as the Tel Shiar, which had been able to infiltrate not only the planet Vulcan, but several other worlds that would eventually become a part of the United Federation of Planets. And once this network had been discovered by Starfleet, along with several both successful and failed attempts to destabilize relations between humanity and seemingly the rest of the galaxy, humanity would declare war on the Romulan Star Empire, with several other species eventually entering the war on humanity's side. Instead of permanently destabilizing Earth and the budding friendships humanity was cultivating with its neighbors, the Romulans' deceitful practices would have the complete opposite effect, causing the Romulan Star Empire to lose its war against humanity and bring these disparate species closer together, and eventually they would unite to form the United Federation of Planets. After losing the Earth-Romulan War, a buffer space between the Romulan Star Empire and the United Federation of Planets would be created known as the Neutral Zone to which entering said zone by either side would constitute an act of war. The zone would be in place for over 200 years, and although constant fear kept both sides watching the other, the Romulan Star Empire and the Federation would never go to war again. 
though the Romulans would attempt time and time again to gain the upper hand on the Federation, but never quite succeeding. Sadly, Romulus and its entire star system no longer exists. In 2387, the Romulan sun went supernova, once again displacing the survivors of the tragedy from their home world. To this day, it is unknown what exactly caused the stable Romulan sun to suddenly become unstable and eventually led to its own destruction. Many theories about outside interference, including several more wild theories about a species known as 8472 or the Undyne being responsible for its destruction, have been brought forward and continue to be investigated, but to this date, no proof has been found to confirm any of these theories. As for the surviving Romulan people, they would once again head into the stars, looking for a new home world, eventually settling on Dewa III and renaming it New Romulus. But instead of turning back to their old ways, this new Romulan government would thrive as a democracy, extending its hand and friendship to those around them, including the Federation. Though centuries of mistrust would still haunt both sides, it's believed that eventually this new Romulan outlook will develop into a strong and lasting friendship between the Romulans and all their previous enemies. For now, however, with the collapse of the Star Empire and, of course, the Neutral Zone, the new free Romulan government continues to adapt to its new situation and status within galactic politics, never forgetting its turbulent history and the star system they once called home. Thank you for watching today's episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon. Did you enjoy the history and information on the Romulan people and their star system as I've laid out here? Do you want me to create more videos like this one, perhaps chronicling what we know about other species, their histories, and their star systems? Well, leave your comments in the section below, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help the channel find its own new homeworld? then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching. Jolantru.